Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Te saluda Glenn Riddell. Gracias por estar en este canal y ver este video. En esta ocasión quiero presentarte un video que me compartieron gracias a las personas que comparten información importante que tiene que ver con la Westover y en este caso también con las víctimas. Este video está enfocado principalmente en lo que está pasando en Pensilvania, en Estados Unidos. Ok, más o menos para que tengan un poco de contexto, pues el presidente de la Cámara de Representantes de Pensilvania, Mark Rossi, tomó la palabra para recordar a todos los miembros de dicha Cámara que las víctimas, las víctimas de abuso, ok, tú sabes a qué me refiero, especialmente los niños, estas víctimas han esperado muchísimo tiempo. Estas víctimas han esperado lo suficiente para que ellos puedan tener la justicia que estas personas merecen. También esta persona, Rossi, también instó al Senado de Pensilvania pues, a que haga su trabajo, a hacer su trabajo y aprobar estos proyectos de leyes que están presentando. La situación en Pensilvania está muy fuerte y más con estos casos de abuso que están saliendo no solamente en instituciones públicas, en universidades, en colegios, en, en hogares, en las casas, sino también esta persona menciona en los testigos de Jehová. Obviamente también en Pensilvania reconocen que estos casos no son ajenos los testigos de Jehová, la Watchtower. Así que dicen, ¿sabes qué? No me importa, no me importa si tú has pasado por esta mala experiencia, por este delito, hace cuántos años atrás, y no me importa si has pasado en los testigos de Jehová. Vas a tener justicia, va a haber justicia. Así que a continuación voy a presentar un video que me han compartido. Este video obviamente de esta reunión está en inglés, pero está subtitulado, ¿ok? Espero que lo puedas ver, espero que lo puedas leer para que veas cómo está avanzando este caso en Pensilvania. Este video está muy bueno, por favor deja tu like, comparte en tus redes sociales, suscríbete para estar más enterado sobre esto que está pasando en Pensilvania. Se vienen muchísimas noticias y obviamente noticias que no le conviene para nada en absoluto a la Watchtower porque ellos tienen un largo, amplio historial de casos de este tipo, de casos delictivos donde hay muchas víctimas y bueno, ya que la justicia de su Dios Jehová, ya que la justicia de la Watchtower no sale, no sale a la luz, no hay justicia ni apoyo a estas personas, pues la justicia del diablo, el gobierno del diablo, el gobierno del mundo tiene que tomar cartas en el asunto para que aquella persona que cometió tal delito no siga libre en una reunión, en una congregación, en una asamblea, sino que tenga que pagar condena, como debe ser. Las leyes del César se respetan. Sin embargo, la Watchtower, los testigos de Jehová, no la están respetando. Bueno, vamos a darle así. Deja tu like y suscríbete también, ¿ok? We heard a lot today. Members bringing up certain things about the public schools, Secretary of State. Let's not forget, first, I don't care if you were sexually assaulted as a child in the rectory or your public elementary school or in the shower by Jerry Sandusky, or at your home, or by a Jehovah's Witness, or by a Jehovah's Witness. I don't care where you were sexually abused. We are going to deliver you justice. That is the bottom line. And to say that we're going to bankrupt the public schools? <sighs> Let me check my sheets. Was that something that the Catholic Conference or the Insurance Federation sent me? I don't know. Because the one thing you have to remember is victims still have to prove their case. If there is no evidence, you're not getting a civil lawsuit settlement. You, you don't go into the public schools and they have thousands and thousands of pages of documents 
if you're a representative and you have a, a diocese in your district, maybe offer them a shredding event where they could have shredded their documents. Thousands and thousands of pages. The victims have to prove their cases or you get nothing. So talking about we're bankrupting anybody, especially the public schools, is absolutely ridiculous. Have victims waited too long? Absolutely. Did the Secretary of State make an, a huge blunder for victims by not advertising? I still call in the question if that was actually a mistake still. But let's not forget about it. The first time a grand jury report even talked about opening a window was 2005, 18 years ago, in the Philadelphia Archdiocese. And then 2011 in the 2011 Grand Jury Archdiocese of Philadelphia Grand Jury Report. And then 2016 in the Altoona Johnstown. And then the 40th Statewide Grand Jury Report in 2018. Victims have been waiting 18 plus years to sue their perpetrator and sue the institution if they added and aided and abetted these perpetrators. My perpetrator was at 12 different parishes before he even came to my parochial school. And I remind everybody in this chamber, when you think about these children being sexually assaulted, being raped, that you put yourself in my position as a 13-year-old boy being raped in the shower, and you, do you think I knew what a statute of limitations was? And that my statute of limitations was two years. That's why we're giving these two years back to these victims. And they sure as hell deserve them. So yes, victims have waited, and they have the ones that have been struggling through this. Oh, well, here we are passing it again. The Senate's not going to take it up. Well, Jesus, if the Senate's not going to take it up, we might as well stop half the business we do in the House. <laughs> Point of order, Mr. Speaker. General will suspend. Gentleman, the leader will provide his point of order. I certainly appreciate the gentleman's passion, but I believe that profanity is not permitted on the floor. Would simply encourage the gentleman to please be passionate about the issue, but within the confines. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, will be reminded to avoid using language that may be perceived as being impertinent. Gentlemen may proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, the struggles that we face here in the House, so difficult, where since I've taken office, I think I've had at least five victims either, either commit suicide or overdose. And we're the ones being burdened going in the special session. Let's do our job. And the minority leader has been right. The House of Representatives, we have been doing our job. This body, Republicans and Democrats, 
We have been passing this bill out of here over, and I think my good friend from Blair County said, well, this is a fourth time now? Is this fifth, fourth? I don't even know anymore. Because every time it goes over the Senate, something else happens. We could have got this done in 2018 when the president pro temp of the Senate decided on the last day of session that he was going to do nothing. That was before the Secretary of State. At some point, this is going to get done. The House has been on the right side. What I'm urging now with my bill, House Bill 2, is of course, this dual path with the constitutional amendment that could be placed on the ballot in November. House Bill 2 is a statutory bill. If the Senate, when they come in next week, decide that they want to do the right thing, and they want to put this in the rearview mirror for victims, they could pass House Bill 2, and our governor, Governor Josh Shapiro could actually sign this bill by the end of next week and deliver justice for victims for over 18 and a half years. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.